Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 127. This episode is the return of Chris Foster. He is a writer, he is a director, he's one of my all-time favorite people in the world. He's also the person I've probably worked with the most when it comes to my acting career. Um, And he has been on before. (laughs) I say it that way because I totally forgot. And he called me out on it in the beginning. Um, But he's back, and the last time we talked was actually a few years ago, right after we wrapped our first movie, Tethered. Um, Since then, he's gone on to make another movie, Deprivation, and then he moved to California. So we talked about what it's like moving to California, how it was different than his expectations, what he likes about it. He, He goes on a rant about how much he hates movie theaters, which, I'll be honest, he makes a few good points. He makes a few good points. Um, So we talk about that. We talk about his philosophy of making every moment count, the importance of being passionate about what you're doing and using your time for things that matter. We talk about working together on Blisters, which is a Western short film that he and I worked on recently. Um, Be on the lookout for that in the near future. And also we talked about his upcoming movie called Burger Bait. He's making this movie about this guy who um, lives in this world where you can live stream yourself on this website, but you only get to do it once. So he works at a drive through of this restaurant called Burger Bait, and he decides to use his one stream to live stream his job. And things get crazy. They go a little awry. Um, but in the lead up to it, Chris is uh, launching a Kickstarter to help fund it. And the perks are insane, not like anything I've ever seen before. And you can actually be a part of the movie making process by backing this movie. And if you're listening to this in September of 2020, He's actually live streaming himself for 12 hours a day, every day in September. So you'll get to see him in pre-production. You'll get to ask him any questions you want. You'll get to follow along. Um, It's bonkers. It's bonkers. It's so good. This idea, the the movie, I'm really excited about it. I've read the script. Um, I'm pumped. I'm really pumped. And the only thing I was more excited about than this movie is getting to hang out with Chris again. So let's just jump right in into it without further ado please enjoy the interesting podcast episode number 127 with my good friend chris foster theme song time like the perfect base level for everything because everyone's using like windows and like regular os and stuff like that but anything else it's like just 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 be the bottom level if you can yeah right solid that's crazy though that's crazy and also have you never been on the show before i was trying to think about it i don't think you i don't think you have excuse me brian yes i have been on the show before when and (laughs) you did not did you okay so yeah so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was, um, I don't know, probably like an early episode, probably like under 20. I, I don't know. Had to have been. But I was oh, listening. I'm looking to this your, up. I was listening to your Bits and Bobs episode. Yeah. Oh, no. And First you were off, talking, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you were talking about uh, how you had, someone asked you a question, have you ever had an episode that you that you didn't post? And he oh. mentioned a couple. And I was like, he didn't mention mine. Because I there forgot. Was, yes. So there's one podcast that we recorded at this table that I'm sitting at. Really? Um, that, we, that was never posted because, well, it wasn't like anything crazy. But after we right. recorded it, we were like, eh, this isn't that good. We should try it another <laughs> time. And, and we did. We tried another time. And then you, you posted that one. And it was cool. Um, when was this? So you've actually been on twice. <laughs> but one was unreleased. My... One yes. was released. Really? Yes. I, have, I kid uh, you not. I spent all last night being like, you know, Chris never came on. I don't know why. That makes no sense why I would have never been on. Well. Because I was on. Because you were on. <laughs> <laughs> I was on. Um, and yes, I have well, one of the coveted unreleased episodes. I'm pretty Yeah. Weird, you you know. got one that's so unreleased that I forgot about it. Yep, that's right. Although to be fair, I also forgot about the time you were on before, so my bad. I'm just leaving completely. This in. Just I'm completely. Leaving this in. Yeah, this is that's this fine. Is, 
that's fine i guess everyone can know you forgot about me that's cool yeah ex- yes that's exactly right and re- <laughs> if there's anyone i've forgotten about in my life it is chris foster yep for sure what yep. a- i'm literally going back in the list what number were you i mean i couldn't even tell you but it, i mean it was definitely an earlier had episode have, for sure because i think we been. recorded it like right after the oh, premiere you're right 17 yeah that sounds right yeah wow that was back when I used to say what people were. So you're like yes. writer slash director Chris Foster. That's me, writer That's you. director Chris <laughs> <It's you>. Foster. <laughs> totally. Wow. That's when you know it's way back when I started differentiating. It was like magician this, cosplayer this. I was like, what, what am I doing? And what now it's doing? just the name, right? Now it's just the name, yeah. Because I'm like, just when you listen, you'll figure it out. Dude, it's crazy how far you've come with this thing isn't it <sighs> dude you're telling me i'm still i still can't kind of i can't really believe it. it's next month is five years That's insane. five years consistently thousands of views thousands yeah, of yeah. listeners it, dude. dude it's insane it makes no sense because it's a show about essentially nothing with people that you probably don't recognize and a host you for sure don't know why it has this many people interested is mind-blowing and like I don't know. What's been crazy to me is I've been thinking a lot about stuff like that is like just the idea of keep going. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Cause I've been, I've been pursuing this dream for six years, like mm-hmm. consistently. I've never stopped. I've had an acting gig on average every month and a half to two months for the last six years. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That can't even like, what am I doing? And then the five year anniversary of the show is next month. I was like, maybe I'll retire. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Like, what is going on? It's nuts. Well, you, you've always talked about how after you get in Star Wars, yep. you're, then you're done. Yep. And then I, then I can you, quit everything. <laughs> dude, and I've told you before, I'm like, no, dude, that can't be the end. Like, there's yeah. so much that yeah. you're going to do and so much that you're going to accomplish that it's just like, that's just a, like a stepping stone in, in your career. Like there's so much, there's so much more, dude. I mean, if you say so, Dimitri said the same thing. He's like, what about after Star Wars? I was like, then I'll come back and be a gas station attendant and live the rest of my life happy. It's like, we'll see. <laughs> Dimitri's the best. Dimitri's the best. You um, both shout are out. fantastic. It's, I got to have him back on. It's been interesting because I, I had Bobby on again recently. And it's like the interesting podcast started in, your, in that house that you're in right now. Bro, we literally recorded the first like three episodes in my parents' bedroom, like in the corner because we're like, all right, we got to find a place that has not too bad echo, like enough room for everyone. So Mm -hmm. let's go in in there. And then we recorded those three, I think back to back. Yep. uh, Yeah, dude, I remember that. I was so excited too. I was like, dude, (laughs) this house is becoming like the content house. Like, (laughs) Like I just wanted to be like constant creative art and creative endeavors just flowing like every i just want people to just come here and do whatever they love to do and i'll just like house them you know what i mean there you go you want to be an incubator yes that's exactly what i want when i i've told people this before like one of my ultimate goals later on is to have a house where i just have a bunch of creative people surrounding me i have like a photographer and i have like you know video and musician and painter like all these different people in the same house and we all just feed off of each other. And sure. like all of us are just going towards the one goal of like moving forward in our creative careers. Like nothing else matters, just creativity flowing constantly. Like that's like yeah. my dream. I mean, that's what you need. Like, you know, Will Smith has talked about like have the people around you fanning your flames as opposed to dousing them. It's like take notice of what's going on. Cause if you have the right team, I mean, the things that you can do is insane. That's such a good, like, that's such a good point. I think that's so true, especially with filmmaking. (sighs) For real. Like one of the most, if not the most collaborative art form, it's bonkers. It takes so many people, dude. Like (laughs) like a a painter can just like pick up a brush and paint something and a musician can just like pick up an instrument or don't even need to pick up an instrument and just like record something and make something. Yeah. Um, In garage band, like like almost every other artistic medium you can do pretty much by yourself or with maybe one other person um sure but when it comes to filmmaking it's just like you need an army i think that's what kubrick said maybe he's like you need an army it's true and you need an army of people who know what they're doing which is a lesson i've learned recently (laughs) if there's too many yeah if there's if there's even one weak link it could bring down the whole thing so yep yeah you gotta be careful 
It's bonkers. Well, I just realized that you were on my show two years ago. <laughs> so... Thank you for having me back after <laughs> yeah. two years. This is not my first time. Yep. No, it, technically not your second either. Um, so not my second. A lot. I'm leaving all this in because this is this is the show. <laughs> Good. That's what I like, dude. I, I want to just put, throw it all in here, dude. Just That's right. That's right. So how have you been? It's also weird because I hadn't talked to Bobby for a while mm-hmm. before he came on the show. We just worked together and we've worked together in January. Like we, we've still stayed in pretty close contact. So yes. like, well, we been, just shot blisters. We did. We just reshot blisters, which was an experience. Dude, I, I'm going through some of the footage and it's nice. Yeah. It's shout looking good. Out, shout out Christian. Shout out uh, dude, for Bobby. Real. Dude. And Slim. Dude, we just talk this whole time. We just talk about like how great everyone is. I know. We know. Real. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for real. No, it was a, uh, uh yeah, a little I guess a little backstory. We'll start at the the now and then we'll we'll backtrack a little bit. Okay. Um, because obviously I have a ton of notes. Uh, Do you re- no, you have notes. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say, throw those notes away right Can now. Can you imagine if I was just like, all right, did, order number actually, one. Before you get into that, did you have notes for um for the FBI negotiator Gary Gary? Yep. Yeah, you Gary Nesner. Yeah. Okay, so here's my process. I'll say it to you. This has not been done before on the record. Here's how I do it. Okay. Number one, I do not have anyone on my show that I'm not interested in already. Mm. Because if I'm not already interested, then my brain won't be like, find out more. Because if, ob- if you're interested in something, you're automatically super dialed in, you're listening, and you have at least something to go off of. Mm. That doesn't necessarily mean that I need to know who you are beforehand, but there has to be something that piques my interest because I'm a naturally curious person. So what I do is I research a ton beforehand. Like if I'm going to have, like Gary, using Gary as an as a, an example. Monique and I had came across Waco, the series. So good. We'd never heard of it before. So I was like, oh, right. So then we watched it and I was like, wow, this is crazy. And then I saw it was based on a book, Stalling for Time, My Life as an FBI Hostage Negotiator by Gary Nesner. And I was like, huh. And then I saw an audible that he recorded the audiobook himself. And I was like, perfect. So I bought the audiobook. And I listened and I was like, this is insane. So I got the show's version of what happened. And then I got his personal life story. I was like, I want to get to know this guy. There's no way he's going to talk to me, but I'll reach out and find out. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. I love that. He was like the nicest, coolest dude. But he also was one of the toughest ones because he was very professional, very like, all right. Like, I think he even started our talks with, okay, uh, so let's get this going. And I was like, ooh, all right. Oh. So what I do is yeah, big time, which, you know, <laughs> Think about who, what he does. Yep. And so uh, what I will do with a guest is I'll research them a ton. So at least I have it all fresh in my head. Um, but also I'll have questions written down that are like my safety net. So I'll talk to you. And then if the conversation ever lulls or it gets like, okay, we're kind of, I see you're losing interest. I'll have these questions to throw back up and keep the conversation going. Mm-hmm. That's how I do it. I don't go in with like, all right, next question here is uh, this here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Like, I'm not trying to get answers out of you. I'm trying to get to know you as a person. It's like safety, just in case. Just in case. So that's, as far as notes go, that's, those are my notes, is my safety questions, just in case. That was such a good interview. I love that interview. And thank you. I saw that when I saw that, because I, so I watched uh, the Netflix series as well. Sweet. Um, and like you, I just stumbled across it. I don't even think I ever heard of it. Maybe I did, but not really. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if this is a, a, a spoiler, uh, nah, but like, it. I mean, people, people, it's a real event. Like people can, yep. you know, I exactly. can't spoil a real event. It already happened. So right. at the end, or I think maybe in the last episode when um, uh, a couple of people are underneath the bus yeah, and that jerk FBI yeah. agent starts digging and the woman says something like, we give up, we give up, please don't hurt us. Like, that destroyed me. Yeah. That moment yeah. in the whole series, like everything that happened in that series built up to that moment for me and I lost it. Yeah. So yeah. after I watched the the series, I was so, like, I was really upset. Like yeah. I was like not <laughs> happy that this happened. I was like, oh, yeah. I can't believe this. But what's so great about the show is they show both sides. Exactly. Um, exactly. And it feels very... um uh, like from a third point of view, <laughs> yeah, it feels agreed. like it's not only from one side. It feels like yeah, they're trying to be objective. I guess is the word. Agreed. Um, so after I saw that, I was like, dude, I got to read this guy's book. Um, right. 
Did you? So I, yeah, so I oh, read it. Oh, sweet. Um, it's read, crazy, right? Like, dude, I can't believe he was at Ruby Ridge. Like, yeah. he, like yeah. so many of the things that he went through and did is just so incredible, even outside of Waco. Yeah. Um, and his thought process about it is so interesting. Like, everyone should should read it. And Agreed. Um, like, just the stuff that he says about, like, how to de-escalate a situation and how to um, – negotiate like every like yeah i think he even says at one point like every a lot of things in life that you go through uses negotiation or you lose a lot of you use a lot of negotiation in your life yep. in different aspects and i was just like man that's so interesting right um, and i was like this guy was right the entire time how did right? no one understand that like yep. of course everyone should be doing it exactly like this guy is saying um and I love what Michael Shannon did with it. But anyways, that was a, that was yeah. a huge tangent. Um, great <laughs> show. Everyone should is. read that book. I don't remember what it's called, but people should find it and read it. Stalling um, for Time. Stalling for Time. Such a great name too. I know, um, right? <laughs> so yeah. So uh, going back to before uh, Waco, you were saying uh, we're going to talk about now and then jump back. So yeah. So you like the episode. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I'll see the episode. Yeah. yeah that was great. That was great. Yeah. I really I'll enjoyed it. I'll 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 jump back on the tangent for a second because Gary really is like one of the nicest, coolest dudes ever. But also the thing that really got me was with that series, it definitely takes us takes a side toward the end where you're like, okay, this leans a little more toward the Davidians of like, okay, well, this was wrong, right? But then Gary, when I had him on the show, I specifically didn't want to talk about Waco because that's all anyone ever wants to talk to him about. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want to talk about your life. So he at the end brought it to Waco. He was like, actually, I want to say something really quick while we're here. And he brought it up. But there was something in his book where he talked about there was this guy. And mind you, this is all real life. So it's crazy to be like, yeah, there was this guy who like took his girlfriend hostage and like killed their kid. And you're like, what? what? It's like <laughs> for us, we're like, that's a story that there's no way you can contextualize. But for him, it was a day at work. Mm-hmm. But he was talking about when it, when it went south and they had to shoot the guy as he was like walking toward the helicopter and stuff like that. Gary mentioned that he was angry. And he's like, I wasn't angry about like what happened per se. He goes, I was angry because he gave us no choice. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I didn't want it to go that way, but he made it go that way. And I was angry because I didn't want it to go that way. And I was like, that says so much about you as a person that you're not trigger happy. And you're not like, let's just take this dude out. He's a piece of trash. You're like, dude, like, why did you make me do this? You know what I mean? It was like, mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah, this dude, uh, please come on my show, please. <laughs> he was awesome. It was so good. And the whole time I was like, dude, Brian's talking to Michael (laughs) Shannon right now, dude. I I thought that was so cool. I was like, this is crazy. As soon as I saw the episode go up, I was like, oh, I'm listening to this. It was was a great episode. You did a great job interviewing him. Thank you. I try. I was just talking to him. I think that's another way I can contextualize these in my head is they're not interviews. Like I get that they are, but also they're not. Like to me, they're not. We're just talking, you know, and like I have things I want to talk to you about. But for me, for some reason, an interview, the word to me says like, I'm trying to get answers from you, mm-hmm. which I guess in the conversational sense I am, but mm-hmm. also not. I don't have a checklist of like, okay, you answer that question, you answer that question. I'm just like, how are you, how are you doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not looking for that gotcha. Like, hey, look at this thing. I'm like, no, how, on a human level, let's connect. Yeah. You know? I, maybe it felt more like an interview to me for that episode because he was so professional. He was so like oh, yeah. straightforward and, and, for and sure. answering your questions as best he could. So yeah. Mm-hmm. But that was that was really good. I love that episode. It was fun. He's he's good. I made him laugh twice and I was like, done. I know, dude. I was so like, I did. Dude, FBI negotiator, dude. I know. So cool. <laughs> so cool. This dude was an FBI agent chasing bank robbers around the country. Still laughed at my dumb joke, though. That's right. <laughs> Insane. He's the best. He's the best. But in the two years since you've allegedly come on my show, uh, a, lot- <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> a lot has happened. A lot has happened. I imagine last time it would have been after the premiere of Tethered, which was how we met. I'm sure we talked about it the first time, even though I don't mm-hmm. remember it at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you go back and listen to it? Uh, no, I don't okay, want to listen good. to anything I've ever done. I feel the same way. I feel the same yeah. way. Bobby listened to his before he came back on. And I've he was listened like, to his, yeah. He's like, here's what we've talked about last time. I was like, oh, I'm so glad you remember. Um, the but you, episodes with Bob are so good. They're he's amazing. So, uh, he's so, he's, he's just good at podcasts, honestly. He is. He's one of my favorite people in the whole world. I love yeah. that guy. Yeah. And uh, so it would have been after the premiere. So you went to California 
mm-hmm. after the premiere. Mm-hmm. How was that? <laughs> it was good, man. California is, uh, California is crazy. Um, yeah. I love it because you're surrounded by creative people at all times and you could just be going to grab a coffee and meet someone um, who you could potentially collaborate with. Um, yeah, everyone is kind of there for the same thing. And I never lived in a place where that was a thing. Like I, I, growing up, I didn't know anyone doing anything creative, let alone getting paid for it. You know, sure. um, I grew up most of my life in like the suburbs of Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's definitely nothing going on really creatively, uh, there. I think there is more now. So, but not when I was kind of growing up, um, sure. So, I mean, I didn't even know anyone who was like a writer or Mm -hmm. um, a filmmaker or or anything really making a living doing this sort of thing. Um, So when I went to LA, it was like, everyone's doing this. And it felt, but at the same time, I think if I grew up in LA, I wouldn't be doing this because I want to do things different from everyone else. Um, Yeah, I sort of gravitate towards what is everybody not, not necessarily doing things other people aren't, but not wanting to do the same things everyone else is doing. I want to, to, to feel like I'm doing something only I can do. Um, okay. Okay. So yeah, it was, it was great. Like being surrounded by, by creative people and people who I could really relate to on any level um, Sure. in a creative way. Was it different than you expected? Um, yes, I think it's, um, I I don't know. I think there are a lot of things that people look at LA in a bad way. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, they're like, everyone there's fake and, um, traffic obviously. And like, you know, (laughs) all these, these different things that, that people hate about LA. Um, and I totally kind of agree with those things, Mm -hmm. but I, I guess I look at them in a different way. Like, I don't, I don't think most people should live there. Um, sure. I think probably like half the people living there maybe shouldn't live there, but interesting, but I think that, you know, when people say like people there are fake, I kind of look at it as everyone there is trying to be something and Mm -hmm. most of us won't. Sure. And I find that so interesting that people have full, for different reasons, people have fully bought into this idea of making something of themselves. Sure. And, you know, there's a, there's some aspect to that, that I really admire in people, people who are, are sort of willing to just try to do this crazy thing. Even if there's a really high chance that they'll fail. I like, I, I don't know. I kind of like the idea behind that. Sure, sure. It's that reckless abandon of like, I don't know. It's it's like when you hit that red line on a car. There's a little bit of danger, but also like, you know, I don't know. It's like it's hard not to respect the hustle in it. Yeah, it's like, you know, a lot of people there are pretty young and it's like, when else are you going to get to try and do this? You Good know? point. Like, Good point. If you're going to take risks, if you're going to try and do something crazy, you should do it now, I think. Um Sure. And just like go all out. Yeah. And I like I f- that idea. I feel like you went out you went out there and then when you came back you had a ton of like business knowledge of like Yeah. 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 So um I mean really the reason I'm not there now is because the entire industry shut down. <laughs> yeah, um, fair, fair. That's fair. Yeah. The, uh, the entire film and TV industry is shut down right now, despite what you hear about like, oh, this productions going in this productions like productions are slowly starting to come back those are all like the biggest companies who are able to pay for the the new covid guidelines that they have um Mm -hmm. you know if i told you about some of these guidelines it's like it's crazy the the amount of precaution that you now have to take Um, and not not saying that it's like a a something that they shouldn't do they should be doing it but smaller productions just can't handle that there's no sure. way so um, much cost yeah i mean yeah. there's you know people like even tyler perry he's shooting some stuff now but he has he's a billionaire first of all yeah. second of all he has his <laughs> own ranch his own um entire back lot he bought the hotel next to his ranch so that he can house his entire crew like so there are so people smart. who can yeah there's people who can go into shooting but like not for smaller productions. Um, 
So, uh, I mean, I don't know what the film industry looks like at this point. I don't know right. how long it'll take for smaller productions to be able to survive again. Um, so yeah, it's kind of all up in the air right now. So I'm just kind of focusing on my own stuff, working remotely on, working on some virtual shows. Mm-hmm. Um, we're working on some mobile shows, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, there's, I, even since coming back, honestly, I've been working on the coolest stuff since coming back from LA. There like you go. ever since, um, ever since my company is no longer able to really produce traditional TV and film stuff. Sure. I'm kind of like, Hey guys, I know how to make stuff in like a digital way. Like I know how to make stuff for the internet stuff where you don't have to produce it in a traditional way. Um, you know, we can make internet shows and I have like a hundred million ideas of how to do so. (laughs) Um, so since, since the pandemic, it's actually kind of been pretty cool because I've been able to pitch my completely insane ideas. And a lot of them have been getting, a lot of interest um nice so yeah i'm just uh trying to go with whatever happens not think too much about the industry yeah where probably, it's going. probably best probably best yeah uh, yeah is it so when you went out to la you learned all this stuff about kind of like the inner workings and whatnot did it was it different than you expected from that side of the camera because like you can't you had the creative side you've made movies you went out there you to go to go shoot your shot but then you learn like oh here's how the machine works Totally. Was it weird? Was it different? Like, how was that? So this is really embarrassing, but I actually, I don't, I definitely should not (laughs) be telling you this, but I wrote an entire first season of a character trying to make it in LA. Um, And like basically living, yeah, basically like living out of his car while he's trying to make it in LA. Sure. And um, he sort of, and I just based off of my own experiences there. Sure. um, but that's so embarrassing. But ah, I think it's awesome. Um, it's so narcissistic or something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> terrible though. Um, You're writing what you know, Chris. <laughs> that's true, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 crazy. Um, you know, before going out there, I think you, you have maybe not even before going out there, but before getting into the inner workings of what happens behind the scenes of a movie, like the business aspect of it. Sure. Your um. You, before that you kind of romanticize movies like movies are this magical sure. thing this that, other world yeah that yeah. just like get made somehow and then get released in this in a theater somehow and then like thousands of people get to go watch this like huge uh world of like make-believe sure um, and then when you see that it's all a business <laughs> and everything is calculated and everything um is on a budget sheet and and you know, filmmakers don't actually get as much creative control as you thought. And um, yeah, there's just a lot, like a lot of what makes, what gets a movie made is the people attached to it. So like the team making it and the actors. And if you have source material that's been successful before, like a book or a comic book or something like that, those are the components that really like get a movie made at the end of the day. It's not the yeah. script. It's not the idea. It's not the, the, the storyboards that you've put together about your movie. It's like none of that. It's just about can like, what is the probability that this project will make me money? And the higher the probability, the easier it is to get made. And the easier it is to get made still is very difficult. Sure. Um, so it really does. You probably, I mean, I know you've heard this before. It takes a miracle to get a movie made, but like yeah. it actually takes a miracle <laughs> to get a movie made. Like there's a, there's a high, high, high chance that it'll fail. Do you find that to be, does it make it easier to make a movie or harder in the actual making of the movie when you understand that like, oh, it's numbers? It makes me realize that making my own stuff is the way to go. Like, I think I'm doing 100% the right thing. I think like trying to create a body of work that uh, is unique to me and interesting to me uh, and then hopefully interesting to other people is I think the best route you can take because, you know, while I was out there, I made almost nothing. I wrote a lot, but primarily I just worked in development, which is right cool you know people make a really good living 
making quote unquote making movies that never get made like it's oh, yeah. just in development it's like i've heard of that it's like so the script i'm meetings. good for the next while <laughs> exactly and that yeah. script most likely will never get made <laughs> yeah um so you know in that time that i was there i think i was there for two years or maybe two and a half years mm. it's just like it, it i learned a lot and i 100 percent would never take back everything that i learned and all the people that i met that's sure. another big thing is like who the people that you know like that's everything really it's it really is like if you get into the right group you can make really big things happen yep. um if you can sort of prove your worth to the right people exactly that being said i think that it's um it's uh yeah i don't know i don't know what i was talking about <laughs> i totally forgot Just, eh, derailed. and there it is no, I think that's important, and I, I like hearing stuff about that because I, I've learned, I've learned a, lo- a lot uh, in the last few years, and it's like, all right, there's so there is almost like a calculated route that you can take, where it's like, I feel both ways about it, where I, like I get really excited about the idea that there is a calculated way to go. It's like if you just get your numbers right, you can set yourself up pretty well, but then there's that other side, like where you want to be creative. Yes. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like it's cool to work in development and get to work behind, all, you know, figure out how these movies work and, and work on the business side. But when you ha- like, I found myself having not made anything new in the past two years or whatever it was. And I was just like, what am I doing? Like, I, <laughs> like, ba- you know, the outward appearance uh, that word appearance of what I was doing is like, this guy's in LA. He's, he's like doing big things. He's working with big companies. He's working with big brands and big scripts and big people. Sure. And at the end of the day, I'm like, yeah, but like I haven't made anything and I would rather like go shoot a documentary in rural South Carolina by myself. Sure. Than do this really at the end of the day, I want right. to, I want to make stuff and I'm just, um, I felt like I was just wasting time. I wasn't wasting time, but that's how I felt in not sure. making things. Um, so I think since the pandemic and not being able to go back to LA, I'm like, I'm fully in on just making my own stuff and like back to that creative thing that I, that I have, because I mean, right after tethered, um, I released the documentary about how we made it. Yep. And then directly after, I think months after, I don't remember. I think I released Tethered, and then at the end of the year, I made Deprivation, my next movie. And then after Deprivation is when I went to LA. Right. So I made these this string of projects in a very short amount of time, and then all of a sudden, I'm not making anything. It's just like I gotta get, I gotta make something, dude. I I don't care what it is. I don't care if it costs two dollars. I need to make something right now. Right. (laughs) Um, But I'm back to that, and I feel really good about it. Good. Good. I mean, that's what you're supposed to be doing. You can feel it. It's like an innate thing where when you when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, like it's almost like a spiritual experience of like, oh right, the frequencies are hidden. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. It's the fulfillment that yep. you get. Exactly. It's pretty good. And you've been, I mean, you've been making stuff since the since the world since you're back. You know, we got empty. That was in January. We got blisters. That was last week. Was that you in know? January? January. I looked it up. No, dude, don't tell me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. It was. It was. I have I have all of your clips um edited color oh, cool. corrected wow sound is there look at you so everything's ready um Ooh. so yeah well, maybe i'll have to i don't know maybe i'll just put all the clips together send you the clips and see what you think Ooh. Um, but I dude hate it's, um, <laughs> no you don't you've already seen them you like them i know you they're, do you can't even try good. that they're pretty yeah, good they're good i'm proud of them. um so yeah, I'll show you that and then we can put some music together or something. But um yeah, and then Blisters is looking really nice too. I'm so excited. Um, I'm so excited. I'm excited too, dude. It looks it looks cool. It's um, empty is a great example of you like just needing to scratch that creative itch because you're like, we need to shoot something. I don't know what it is. Let's just do it. And then in one night at a gas station, made a pr- I feel like you told a pretty compelling story. Dude, I was so excited to shoot that. You have no idea. I was like, <laughs> after we shot that, I was driving home and it was like the best drive home ever. Really? Like, Finally. After, and that was probably <sighs> the first thing I shot after that time in LA. Um, yeah, I think so. And I was just like, 
this is what I want. And after that, I was like, all right, I'm making another movie. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> you know, I went into overdrive after that. That was so fun. There you um, go. It was, it was. And we, we got Christian out of it, you know, building the Avengers. It's exactly pretty good. I'm going to get Christian on some more stuff for sure. Um, Definitely. Yeah. He's yeah. awesome. Yeah. He needs to be on, on more stuff for sure. He's great. I'm excited. I'm and excited. I work well with him too. Like I, I think I so. Like, yeah. I, I like that he doesn't just take whatever I say and he's like, okay. He like, he'll challenge the things that I say and be like, uh, did you think about this? Maybe you should do this. I think we should do a shot like this. And I'm like, that's, I love that. It's so great. Like, I, yeah. that's, that's what I want. That's you know? what you, that's what you need. I feel like, you know, mm -hmm. especially like, I think this says a lot about you as a director, which I've always said, like, you're my favorite person to work with. Oh. And like, Christian, I mean, even in blisters, like you guys would be doing a shot and he goes, can we do one like this? Like I have a different idea that I think would work. And you're like, ah, yeah, let's just, let's do one like that and see how it goes. And it's like the fact that you're willing to be that collaborative, you know, where you don't have an ego on set, I think is really invaluable. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not, I never look at any of the projects as like my movie. Right. I definitely look at it like I brought everyone who's on set. I brought them on for a reason. Like they're yeah. there for a reason because I value their creative input or I value a certain skill that they bring. Sure. Um, so yeah, dude, I always want like creative input and, and opinions and like, I, it's fine if, if people like challenge what I think, like I want you to challenge what I think. So then I can tell you exactly why I'm doing it. And if I can't, articulate why i'm doing something then i shouldn't be doing it sure you know sure. i like it i like it i love making movies dude i know dude i love movies it's so it's great like, like i awesome. miss movie theaters same that's what I, I miss a, the most i have a huge love-hate relationship with movie theaters do you um why but do you it's, need them? i mean we can get into this if you want let's to. go let's dance okay so <laughs> so yeah. but the, before breath. i before i say all this i i definitely have been edging towards the love side of movie theaters since all this happened i'm, I'm definitely okay missing it. okay absence makes the heart grow fonder all right this is why movie theaters <laughs> suck <laughs> okay i'm gonna push back a little bit uh, go so here we go oh chris Foster i have story uh, yeah i should i should not even be saying this um but that's okay so nobody listens to the show anyway don't worry about yeah, it no one's gonna get make it this far um <laughs> yeah. so 20 minutes in or something yeah um, who knows so so okay so i have a um a regal card uh which basically means i pay like a certain amount per month yep or, or i I, yeah. I paid it all at once and then i okay I, it's a subscription right unlimited yeah. movies every month i wanted to get that it's nice i like it yeah. uh so uh, so I was going to see a lot of movies at, at Regal and I'm talking specifically about Regal theaters. Cause that's what I've had the most exposure to recently. Okay. Um, well, not recently, but prior recently. Got um, <laughs> so I would go in and watch, uh, like three to five movies a week, probably at one point, okay. just seeing okay. everything that was out. Respect. Um, so uh -oh. It got to the point where I would just like, I would always go on a weekday at the last showing and I'm sure that the workers there hated me, but I would go <laughs> in like, you know, 10 PM on a Wednesday. I would never go on Friday, Saturday or Sunday, always okay. Monday through Thursday late. And it eventually just got to the point where I would just walk in and they wouldn't even check my thing anymore. They're like, Oh yeah, there he is. Like there you go. One, one time I walked in with like a LaCroix or something and I just walked right in. They didn't <laughs> care. Like they, they were, you know, they're like, Oh, they're, there's a crazy guy watching a the movie. There's that guy who has literally nothing else to do with his life. <laughs> going to see another movie on Wednesday night at 10 PM. Listen, um, you're saying this to a guy who saw rogue one 22 times in theaters, bro. It's research. Yeah, research, that's I what I said. That. But yeah. by the when I walked up, the girl at the box office was like, "You seeing it again?" I was like, <laughs> "Yes, I am." <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, so you end up like no getting to know everyone there. It's I did, I did. She was so nice. Anyway, I'm just saying, anyway. there's no judgment here. <laughs> so, um, let's uh, let's assume that people already understand how the popcorn is overpriced and how how yep. you know all, all of those obvious things. So. My biggest complaint with movie theaters is oh. the movie starts at 10, right? So 10 p.m. Okay. showing. I'm going to yeah. go in and, and watch Star Wars. And yeah. I sit down at 10 p.m. 
Uh-huh. And I have to sit there for like 20 minutes okay. while random random com- first of all it's commercials if you show up oh, five yeah. minutes before 10 p.m it's just commercials there's like that's true tnt that's true. commercials or like yeah. just random like tv commercials yeah get your car washed on pine ridge road it's yeah. the worst yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then at 10 p.m they're like oh the lights are going down oh it's time to watch a movie nope really? you're gonna watch 20 <laughs> minutes of tra- of the same trailers that you've seen because you've been coming here every single night that you've okay. seen <laughs> for the past five nights in a row yeah and i mean i already i've already paid my due i have paid for the membership let's say okay. i'm paying for individual tickets i paid 11.95 for okay. a movie ticket to see a movie yes why do I have to sit through regular commercials? First of all, I, I pay fair, my ticket. Fair argument for that one. If, if you're going to show me commercials, I should be able to walk in here for free. I should be <laughs> able to not to pay a ticket and walk in just like a Netflix. I'm paying the subscription. I don't have to see ads. Right. Okay. I okay. honestly don't mind the trailers, but if you're going to have trailers, make the, make the, um, the start time just like 15 minutes later. Just tell me when it actually oh. comes. And so it starts at 10, 15, but I would still come at 10 because sometimes I like watching the trailers. I'll get there early and watch some trailers. That's totally cool. But Good if point. you're telling me a movie starts at 10, start the movie at 10. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I don't need to see five commercials. Plus in between the trailers, sometimes yep. they'll have just crappy regular TV commercials. Oh, no. So, and not even mentioning like, those stupid Coke commercials that they have now. <laughs> oh yeah. Every single the, time they're like, the short oh, film. <laughs> oh my God, dude. And they're like, <laughs> oh, I'm a USC student uh, and I made this commercial. And then they show the commercial and it sucks. And I'm like, why <laughs> are you showing this when it's like, young, you're giving young filmmakers a bad name by showing these commercials. They're not good. <laughs> like you, like if you, that's a, oh my God, dude. Chris, it's how like, do you really feel? <laughs> if you want to show like a, if you're a USC filmmaker, all the yep. UFC, uh, UFC, all the USC filmmakers, all the UFC filmmakers, this, we're talking to Conor McGregor a, right now. <laughs> when Coca-Cola comes to you and they're like, "Hey, we want you to make us a commercial for free. We'll give you this budget, and we're going to show it in all of our movie theaters, and then you get to shout yourselves out." Just make something cool. Don't like, <laughs> don't just have a guy walking in and there's a cloud above him and it's raining, and then he sits down and then he takes a sip of the coke and then sunshine comes above his head. Like you can do better than that. You are the next generation of filmmakers. Make something cool. Make something interesting so that when I sit down and I have to wait 20 minutes while these trailers play before I get to see Star Wars, make something unique. Make something interesting. And, um, yeah, I I, I beg you. <laughs> I beg of you to just make something and it can be, you know, Coca-Cola friendly, like big brand friendly. Just make sure. it like, just give, just do something unique, please. Just <laughs> please do something unique and, and, and moderately cool. Um, now you're, get, you're being given a cool opportunity. Just do something cool with it. You're I was never going to get the say, opportunity again. Now, do you feel that way because of the platform that's been given? It's like they're wasting their spot. Like I remember I had a buddy who was in a band, a mm-hmm. very, very good band. And they were like a local sort of touring band, right? But I remember he got really upset because uh, it was one of the morning shows and whatever, and Corey Feldman's band played. Yes. And they were awful. And he yes. was so upset because it's like, if you're going to get that platform, at least have somebody up there that's good. It's like a, wa- it's like a physical manifestation of an almost wasted opportunity. It's like, just um, flex your wings a little bit. I'm not saying that you're incapable of doing it. I'm saying that you could have done it and you chose the cloud. You know, it's yeah, like- I think that that's a problem. Like that's not, see, if we're comparing it, it's, that's not Corey Feldman's problem because he probably did the best he could For and sure. it just wasn't good. In that case, it's the news, the news, whoever brought them on, it's their fault because they sure. just want eyeballs. Like maybe they even sure. knew that it would suck. So they're like, oh yeah, come on our show, do your thing. And we'll get a nice viral video out of it. Sure. Um, whereas with this, it's filmmakers just being like, oh yeah we got this cool deal with coke like this is gonna be awesome <laughs> let's just go make something that we've seen before and sure. something super boring like dude a cloud above your head <laughs> raining on you. are you kidding me that's the best you could come up with you get a coke commercial that's the best you could come up with so 
And look, maybe like, I don't know the ins and outs of the Coke commercials and how these guys do this, <laughs> but like my instinct tells me that they have a certain level of creative freedom. Yeah. And I mean, who knows, maybe like Coke picks out of 20 of them and they just pick the worst ones. That could be the case too. Sure. But just please make something cool. Just, just <laughs> you have a, and you have a whole movie theater. You have a, I'm sure you have a whole back lot to work with. I'm, you have great actors to work with. You have sure. the best cameras to work. Like just do something moderately cool. Yeah. <laughs> if you need ideas, email me at chris at fosterkidfilms.com. Yeah. I will give you ideas. <laughs> there you go. There you go. A hundred thousand ideas, whatever you need. I'll give you as many ideas as you want. That's so funny. Yeah. I, you know what? I can respect the, the, the movie show times being when the movie itself starts that I could get behind. Yeah. That, that's, I, that's a fair criticism. The commercials stop showing up so early, Chris. <laughs> bro. Okay. They, I mean, if they didn't want me to show up early, they wouldn't show these stupid commercials, but that's really true. like I'm, I'm paying my ticket. I yep. feel like I shouldn't have to sit through cable commercials. I can, I can understand that. I yeah. can understand that from someone who's going to the movie theaters. You don't want to see like Ted's car wash. You're like, all right. You know, I, yeah. so I'm a big fan of trailers. I love yes. trailers. I get, I get probably a little too mad when we're late for trailers. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I've gotten into so many, uh, almost speeding tickets of like, we're going to be late. Mm -hmm. And it's like the movie doesn't start, but the trailers are going to start. And I just love trailers. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm into the trailers, but it does become a problem. Like I had the trailers memorized uh, when I saw Rogue One all those times. Mm -hmm. the, specifically, it was uh, the latest Fast and the Furious. Oh, nice. Yeah. And yeah, I remember yeah. being like, oh, here we go. <laughs> Boom. All right. <laughs> the one thing, family. And like, <laughs> <laughs> Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. Charlize Theron. <laughs> They're not ready for the one person they can't go up against their own. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And I'm like, oh, here we go. So good. But yeah, no, I could totally get behind. Like, okay, say movie starts 10, mm. 15. Trailers start at 10. Mm. Movie starts 10, 15. Mm. But then what if they do that? I mean, I know they do it because they want to promote the other movies. But what if they mm. do it because they know people are going to be late? Well, yeah. So, you know, because of this and you, because people don't actually know when the movie's going to start, sure. people come in late when the movie's already started. And then you have to deal with people walking in front of you you have to deal with all that i think yeah. that um so it would cut down on that if people are like all right as long as i get there a little bit before 10 15 i'll see the end of a trailer and then it'll start but we have no idea when the movie starts it could be 30 <laughs> minutes it could be 20 minutes nobody knows so i think that after this whole ordeal of everything being shut down and and movie theaters basically dying out possibly i think that movie theaters are going to have to create an experience like Agreed. you have to make it so that i want to go to the movie theater despite their possibly being like you know sure uh, there being a pandemic you know there's i think that the sure. tail end of the pandemic is going to last a long time of people not wanting to go in crowded places too long for Some sure people. um so you have to make it worth 12 bucks and 20 dollar popcorn and 50 dollar drinks so like for me to go to the movie theater, it needs to be an experience. Um, sure. So right now it's just like, I feel like I go and then they're just trying to sell me stuff the entire time. Like they're trying to get any money out of me that I can. And it's like, this experience probably isn't even worth 12 bucks right now. Honestly, you're, you're like, sure. give me commercials. You're giving me all this stuff. Like I could just stay at home and watch a movie on the criterion channel like <laughs> so it's i don't know i'm i'm but that being said i really miss like movie theaters yeah. I miss going to movies. <laughs> and please please uh please, I, hope, please. I hope i hope all this goes away so i can go to the movie theater again one day that's right that's right you're gonna be like ah oh, ted's car wash i missed you <laughs> <laughs> i miss the overpriced popcorn yeah yeah i uh i love movie theaters i love mm -hmm. movie theaters but it, I mean, they're, you know, they're super expensive now. It's like $15 tickets. You're like, sheesh. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I, I worked at a movie theater for a few years and I loved it. And so I think about that and I'm like, it's just a fun sort of, I don't know. It can be fun. I think, you know what? I think the reason I love movie theaters, apart from the obvious, I just adore movies. Mm -hmm. The movie theater that I went to as a kid, first one I ever went to, um, the owners of the theater is a real small one. I think, have you been to the one near here? It's called mm -hmm. Town Center. 
anyway, beside the point, it switched owners over the years. But when I was a kid, there was this uh, couple, Jeff and Vicky were their names. They owned the theater at the time. And Jeff would come out and introduce every movie. And it was just a cool spectacle thing. But the Mm -hmm. people hated it. Hated it. Oh, yeah. Me as a kid, I was like, this is fantastic. Oh, here he comes. Oh, he's coming out. And he's like, hey, everyone. It's a show. Yeah, it was a show. And he would do this whole big thing. I live in Naples, which are a bunch of like angry, rich, old people. And so they were like, just start the damn movie, Jeff. And I'm like, <laughs> what? This is fun. He's coming out and he's like, oh, everyone, welcome. Thanks for coming in today. Uh, enjoy, you know, uh, this movie about this and then a little bit of this. And then he'd walk out. We'd be like, here, he's here. Like my brother and I loved it. Yeah. And people got so mad. And then when they lost it and another company bought them out, I had, that was when I started working. And I had people come up to me being like, oh, thank God they got rid of that idiot that would come before the movies. I was like, oh, my gosh, what is dude. going on? What That's happened That's so sad. They, yeah. they need to, like Regal and AMC, these big, these big theater companies, they need to take notes from smaller theaters like um, the Alamo. Um, yeah. And little like independent chains because those are the people that take movies seriously. And yeah. Regal and AMC have just become like a corporate – business that seems like they don't care about movies and that's how you're gonna lose i think in the long run sure sure we need to bring bring it back to the spectacle make it a make it a show yeah it needs to be a show that's the only the only way and when you have movies coming out by quentin tarantino and christopher nolan it should not be difficult to make that a show to make it an experience to go to the movies and see that you know that's a good point that's a good point but no one wants to go to the movie theater anymore and they need to uh they need to work on some stuff yeah, we got to figure something out. Everything's going streaming now. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's a good thing, but at the same time, it's like, dude, I still want to go to the movie theater. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, I'm going to miss it. But for my own stuff, it's weird because I don't, I, I don't think I care if my stuff specifically ever is in a movie theater. Like, really? I don't think I care. Yeah, I don't think I care if it's shown in a movie theater. I think I've watched tons of great movies on my phone, and I've loved them. Like, I... Sure. You know, I think as long as you sort of keep in mind where your movie might be seen when you're making it, like, I think it's, it's, I don't know. I think it should be totally fine. I, I don't make it a huge deal, you know? Is that because of cost? Like maybe in a way of like, it's so expensive that for me, it isn't worth the cost to put it in. Therefore you can kind of mentally dismiss it. No, I think if I put a movie out exclusively to movie theaters yeah. And then I put a movie out exclusively that you can only see on your mobile phone. More people are going to watch it on their phone than see it in theaters. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Because Good it's point. just in your pocket. That's and true. I, I think I also try, especially lately, I try and make movies for uh, my generation. Like I, I, I yeah. want to be one of the early filmmakers in my generation coming up who sure. is making content for us. Um, Good point. Stuff that no one's ever done before, you know, playing with, with different mediums and sure. um, experimenting and trying to figure out, like, why is it that when, um, you know, someone who grew up with, with the internet, why is it that they're watching a movie on Netflix and they're also on their laptop and then they're also on their phone? Like, right. why is that? And can I use that? to make a better movie um you know i don't look at it as a problem like people look at that as a problem and i'm just like that's just our generation at this point how can i make a movie for them that they'll love and maybe maybe i'll make it so that it's better if you're on your laptop maybe i'll make it so that there's something you can experience outside of the movie that also uses your laptop that also uses your phone maybe i maybe I can give you all of the content that you would be getting on your laptop or on your phone. Maybe I can get that all in the movie and make it layered enough to where you can't look away to where there's so many different things happening that you, you wouldn't dare look at your phone. Sure. No, that makes sense. It's like you're adapting to the way that the brain works now. It makes, it makes total sense. Cause I've noticed like, I'm not a gamer, right? Mm. There are a few games that I've been obsessed with. Like, for me, it really has to grab me. Um, so, you know, games like Red Dead 2 and, like, Ghost of Tsushima and Star Wars games and mm-hmm. stuff like that, like, really grabs me. But other than that, I get bored very, very easily with games. Mm-hmm. But I know other people that they feel that way about movies. Mm-hmm. They love games, but they get really bored watching a movie. And I, I think I've realized that it's because of the level of interaction. Because I like to sit back 
and enjoy a story being told. Mm-hmm. I, I, tell me a story. That's why, that's why I love movies so much. I'm just watching a story unfold. Whereas a game, if you don't move the joystick, your character doesn't move. You have to actively move the story along. Mm-hmm. And that is like, think about like streaming and how much money there is and stuff like that. And like, it's a culture now within this generation. So it's like, if you could make something that was more interactive per se, I think you're on the right track for something, especially for this generation. Yeah, I think so. And I mean, you look at something like Bandersnatch, right? That came out on Netflix, right. um, where you sort of choose your own adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that that's interesting. I don't know how successful that was. I thought that it was a pretty cool experience, but I think like trying really risky things like that, like sure doing weird interactive stuff that you can't get anywhere else because I think that's the type of stuff that Hollywood can't do. Like sure. that's what I want to work in. I want to work with stuff that only I can do and stuff that there's no way that they could, you know, make a movie and release it for free. Right. Which is what I'm trying to do. Sure. Sure. So I think that's, that's what I want to do. Like I want to, I want to make stuff that no one else can make. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like that. I'm wired the same way and that like I, but I'm also, do you, are you competitive? I was thinking about this last night. Would you consider yourself competitive? Cause I am not at all. That's a really good question. I know, right? Uh, it's tough for me um, yeah? because I don't know, dude. I don't know. That's I know, really right? Tough. Yeah. I asked the hard one. I was thinking when I'm, when I'm playing tough. like sports, which is not often, if I'm playing a sport, I'll, I will be competitive, um, but like in other aspects, no, I don't think I'm competitive. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't I think because I have this thing where like I I if I see someone doing something really really well, I have no interest in it because mm-hmm. it's already being done really really well. I don't have that part of your brain where you're like, I'm gonna do it better than them. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna do my thing the best that I can do, and then if someone comes along and they do it better than me. I'll change gears and I'll do something Mm. else. And that's just how I've always been. Like even my little brother, like I would do something and then he'd want to do what I'm doing because he's my little brother. Mm. And then I would switch because I'm like, well, if you're going to do it, then I'm not going to do it anymore. It's like a weird, I don't know what that is. I should probably go to therapy for it, but it's something, (laughs) (laughs) something about that. I don't have that competition. I have the competition with myself all day long. Mm. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be the best that I can possibly be. Mm. But if I see someone who is arguably better, I'll just do something else because there's yeah. a thing there, right? Like, do you, do you have that? Or is it like, I don't know. Cause artists, you have to have this thing where you, I mentioned that to you the other day. Like one of my favorite things about you is you believe in your work. Mm. You're like, whatever I'm doing, I 100% believe in this. And I was like, how? So, okay. So I had this weird realization. Well, first of all, I think I'm competitive when it comes to sports. I don't really play sports anymore, but I used to <laughs> really want to win. I okay. really like to win and I really like to be the underdog. Um, so when I, okay. whenever I'd be playing sports, I would put myself in the situation of being the underdog because I'm like okay at sports. Like I'm not really that athletic, but like sure. I used to be like sort of okay at, at sports. Athletic enough to play, right? Sure. Um, so in, in those cases, I would really want to win. I would really not want to lose. Um, and I think I was competitive in, in that way, in a story way of like, I'm the okay. underdog, I'm Rocky. Like, sure. <laughs> and that's the thing too, though, is because like Rocky lost at the end of, at the end of Rocky one. So it was more like, I'm okay with losing, but I'm going to try as hard as I possibly can because like, that's what Rocky would be doing right now. Like, right. Like, right. It's, it's fine if I right. lose. But- what he says, you try as hard as you can, whether you want to lose. You get hit, you get back up. <laughs> you yeah, get hit, exactly. you get back up. Hey, you yeah. think it's a little worm? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I think I sort of had that mentality, but when it comes to art, artistic endeavors, I think I've, I've chosen something that I want to be really, really, really good at. And I put everything into that. So sure. I don't, I don't really like doing things that I'm not good at. So I spend all of my time in filmmaking and writing and producing and whatever it is in filmmaking. Mm-hmm. And that's, sort of like I'll, I can suck at everything else and I'm totally fine with that. I can suck at everything, mm-hmm. but I want to be really, I want to be the best I could possibly be at this one thing. Okay. And I've dedicated my life to being as good as I possibly can at that thing. Um, 
Sure. So there's no really way to be competitive. I feel like I'm in my own lane. I don't really look around me. I don't think like mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta tear like this person down to like go back to, to get higher. Like I, I'm just focused on my own thing and I'd love to bring people up with me, honestly, while I, while I do it, I want to support everyone doing artistic endeavors. Um, sure. But I had this weird realization and I think it's really extreme and weird and like pe people should not listen. Pe by the way, people should not ever take <laughs> anything I say like and apply it to their own life. Like, please don't, <laughs> don't like, I'm just, I don't, I in one ear out the other. <laughs> great. Okay. That's what I want. Um, Same but, for me. Double I had this, I had this realization and I was like, why would you ever do anything if you're not willing to die for it? Because I can see that what you're doing now, you're already dying doing it. That is morbid, but also the whole, you know, you know what I mean? Get busy living, get busy dying kind of stuff. Well, no matter what you're doing, you're dying doing it. You're spending the only time that you have doing it. You have a yeah. set amount of seconds in your life that you get yeah. and you're using it. We're using it right now in this podcast. Yep. So like everything that you do should be calculated. Like everything you should do. This is the only thing that I want to be doing right now. Sure. Oh, and, <laughs> and like, that's how I try and live my life. It's not like, uh, it's very it's not a good way to live but it's also a great way to live yeah I'm just trying to do what you love it always. is it's well it's a it's a very morbid way of saying make every moment count which i wholeheartedly subscribe to because like yes yeah, you know that time's going regardless so you need to like make it matter devote mm -hmm. like commit mm -hmm. you know what i mean to whatever you're doing commit to it i absolutely i absolutely agree with that yeah i think so just like um just go all out like this is, this is all you get so um yeah I, I i came to that realization i'm like yeah i'm just gonna do like i'm totally fine with saying like i would die for this movie and that's a ridiculous thing to say but that's what i'm doing you know sure. what i'm saying like it's it's a it can be seen as a ridiculous way to contextualize it but the sentiment is true i like contextualizing it that way though i yeah. like like the extreme hey, thought works. of that yeah. yeah i'm an extreme person as well i feel you <laughs> yeah like just the extreme thought of like everything that i do every single day i need to be willing to die for and it's sure. so extreme it's so ridiculous that it works for me i don't know why i mean but. that's the key it's like it's asking your level of commitment and then you know you will always get at least what you put in mm. you know what i mean there's always a full return on hard work you know which is another thing i think the rock says all the time but he's amazing anyway so that's yeah it. anyway but yeah, no, I think it's totally true. And for something like filmmaking, you have to be that devoted and committed because there's so many things you're doing and you specifically being at the top, there you're juggling a hundred things at once. Mm -hmm. And like at the end, you got to take responsibility for it. So you have to come to terms with like, here's what I've spent this thing doing. It better be good. <laughs> like, exactly. Otherwise you're wasting a lot of people's time. So exactly. it's like you kind of have to have that superpower drive. Or at least you have to feel that it's good. Like, yeah. I think that if you feel that it's objectively good and you're proud of what you're putting out, then, um, I mean, that's the best you can ask for. You're, I'm definitely the hardest critic to, to satisfy. I feel like um, but I think I told this to Danny one time and I've thought about it a lot since I told him, um, Danny who played, uh, rich and, and, and tethered. Yeah. I told him, uh, he, he asked me like, if, if, uh, if a movie sucks, is it, the director's fault or the entire, you know, everyone who made the movie is it everyone's fault. And I said, um, did you not hear what I said to him? No. Okay. So I said, I think that if a movie sucks, it's the director's responsibility. It's the director's fault. If a movie is great, it's everybody's fault. Good point. Everybody who worked on the movie, it's sure. everyone's movie. I, but I, if it sucks, I feel like I, director. I feel like I agree with that. Yeah. I feel like I agree with that. It's a, uh, yeah. Because I mean, at the end of the day, like it's your, it's your project, but then also like, obviously this is a generalization, you yes. know? So like there could be producers and other people involved that like kneecaps the director. So it wasn't really fully their vision. And there's definitely ways around that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it is interesting kind of how that works. So you, you really have to have a tough back to be a director really, because you're taking the whole thing on. And then if it goes bad, it's directed by Chris Foster and the credits. So you're like, you directed all of this. 
You know what I mean? Like you were the director of this parade. If you didn't enjoy it, well, I mean, who put it together? You have to be uh, okay with failing. Yeah. How do you deal with that? (laughs) Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I go into it expecting that, look, I'm not perfect. Like, I'm, oh, I, think uh, so. I, I look <laughs> at myself as a kid, like I made tethered at 18, you know, like I, I look at myself as a kid trying to figure this out. I don't really, you know, I don't claim to know everything about anything. Sure. I'm just making things that speak to me and then releasing them. Um, and this is what I, this is what I had to say at this moment, you know, while I was writing it, this is who I was. I'm not going to be that person for probably much longer, but at this point in my life, this is what I was able to make. And this is what I was able to put it out. So I think I love the process of making movies so much that whatever the outcome is, is okay. It's worth it. Okay. You kind of like give yourself permission to learn and you don't take yourself too seriously. But somehow, even doing that, you still make really good stuff. That's what doesn't make sense to me. It's like, okay, like you, there's an innate thing there that I don't know what it is, but I like it. So good job. <laughs> you mean like a, an, an innate thing that is like a thread through everything I make? Yeah, or? like there's something about you and the way that you approach work that creates the good work, which is a mm. really dumb sentence because I'm not good at words. But I think you know what I'm saying. Like, You haven't made anything so far. Like, even if there's something that you made that, like, I wasn't crazy about, it's still good. It just might not have been my version of good. You know what I mean? You Mm. haven't made anything that I've seen that has been objectively bad. Mm. I've made tons of stuff that's objectively bad. I've been a part of some of the worst stuff. So I, I have things to at least compare it to. But there's something about your belief in your work that I think comes through in the final product. And it's pretty Thanks, good. Ryan. That's so nice of you. Um, it's just facts, you know. <laughs> I think also maybe part of it is I, I think I'm pretty good at convincing people of things. Like, uh, yeah, I would I say think, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can like sell you on, on most ideas, um, yeah. whether they're right or wrong. I think I can like sell an idea pretty well. There you um, go. The negotiating. <laughs> yeah. So maybe <laughs> that has to do with it of like being able to convince my cast and crew of what we're all trying to do. And, sure, you know, and like I said, like if something is, is good, like if a, if a movie is good that is put out, it's everyone, you know, it's everyone's doing. Right. So a big part of it also is bringing on great people. Like True. True. so much of it is just bringing on great collaborators. And then, you know, they give me an idea and I use it and then it's great. And then I get credit for it. It's like, sure. you know, <laughs> there, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things going on that aren't just me. Um, so I don't know. It's like, I, I just do my best to put out the best work I can. And maybe it shows, maybe the fact that I love making it so much sort of shows through in the end product of like, I don't know how this thing's going to turn out, but I'm going to do the best I can. And everyone I bring on is going to do the best I can, is going to do the best that they can. Sure. And that's going to be the end product. So, I mean, I don't know. That's very nice of you to say though, Brian. (laughs) I mean, it's working and passion. Passion is very infectious, which is Mm. my favorite. I I will listen to somebody talk for an hour about something. I don't even know what they're saying, but if they're passionate about it, I'm so in. Like, I just think it's the best. It really is. Yeah. yeah, It's it's the greatest. But you talking about like, because you did Tethered, you did Deprivation, which was deprivation was a handy cam sort of thing if i remember correctly yes very like weird pass, sort of pass cameras around things like that yeah and then from there you went to la and then after la since you've done empty which was you needed to do the itch and then recently we reshot blisters mm-hmm. which was a, a short film that i wrote way back i saw on facebook memories the other day a year ago slim was storyboarding it a year really? ago. A year ago. Yeah, I think Can we you shot believe it. We, we got that reshot. No, no, I can't. <laughs> I think about it all the time, and like I just somebody asked me the other day, "How's like, How'd it go?" I was like, "I feel like everyone did a really good job, but I don't know because I was cooking in a fire." Yes. <laughs> I was like, "I hope to God it looked. I hope it worked." Carly cried, so it makes me feel better. I feel like yeah. I might have done something right, but the fact that you talking about convincing people. So uh, the super long story condensed. I shot a short film, a Western way back in October. 
And I just grabbed everybody that I knew who had never even touched audio equipment or anything like that. And I was like, hey, can you help me make this thing? Um, and we did, and everything went wrong and just the worst possible things. And then we couldn't use any of the footage and blah, blah. So then we had a tethered reunion. Tethered, for anyone that doesn't know, that was the first movie we made together. Um, and I just asked. I was like, hey, guys, listen, because you keep bugging me. Because you, Bobby, and Dimitri were like, we want to see blisters. I want to see it. And I'm like, well, you're never going to because here's what <laughs> happened. And I was like, would you be interested in helping me reshoot it? And you were like, hell yes, let's go. Of you course. found us a ranch and a new horse within a day. You handled everything. We did rehearsals for a few hours. You brought Carly in who worked on Tethered and like made it happen. How, for me, it's way too personal, but how was that experience for you? Because this is, I asked a lot. I asked a lot of you, like nighttime shoots, live animals. You don't know people around here. Put together a crew. Like how was blisters for you? Um, I mean, I, I've done that type of thing before, right? We shot tethered. I drove from that's upstate true. New York <laughs> to Florida. I didn't know anyone. Yeah, and that's we true. shot a movie together. Good point. Um, so I don't know, like, you know, at the last minute we heard that, that we didn't have the horse available. Yeah. Um, so that literally the day before we were going to shoot the night before, really, we yeah. found out that the, the horse was unavailable and we wouldn't be able to get the ranch. Yeah. Um, and I was not worried about it at all. That's, I don't know. I was just like, <laughs> you just cool. Steady yeah, hand. <laughs> yeah. I, it was just kind of like, Oh yeah, we'll figure this out. Like I have no doubt in my mind that we'll figure this out. Um, That's crazy. So I called you and I was like, yo, Ryan, what's up? You're like, dude, I don't know what to do. Like what, like, I don't want to have to re like all this stuff. We were yeah. possibly going to reschedule. We wouldn't be able to get Carly for your schedule. May probably wouldn't be able to get Dimitri or Bob either. Yeah. Um, so we we're like, all right, well, I mean, let's try call around yeah. and see what we can do. Yeah. And I got connected to like one person and they were like, uh, try this person. They, they, they own like a local shop in town. They, they know everyone. I was like, all right. So I called them. They're like, oh yeah, call this person. Well, I called them and then called the, the uh, M and H that we ended up using. Mm -hmm. um, and I explained to her the situation. She was like, yeah, sounds good. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't even like- That was a, it? Just like- I, like you're giving me way too much credit. I was literally just like, <laughs> I called maybe before that I maybe called like three or four other places in the area. Sure. Um, called, I mean, it's, it was all her. Like she was just like, yeah, that sounds cool. Let's do it. Um, that's insane like, to me. Awesome. Uh, so, and it was, uh, I mean, how long was that? Like I called you and then I texted you again that we found a spot. Like it's like an hour. Minute. Yeah. Maybe even. an hour, to, an hour maybe. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you're definitely giving me too much credit, but um, yeah, dude. I mean, that's kind of how I looked at it is like, dude, I get to shoot with Brian again. We're just going to go run and gun it. Like we always do. Yeah, yeah. And, um, just try and, and make something. I'm so, that, that's the thing is like, if everything goes wrong on a production, everything, yeah. I'm just like, I just, I love to be shooting movies right now. Like sure. a year ago when I wasn't shooting anything, I would have killed to be in the rain with Brian <laughs> while he's cooking in a campfire, yeah. a horse that's <laughs> peeing all over him with like yeah. bugs and like water and like rain. Like I would have killed to have those problems a year ago. You know sure. what I mean? Sure. I just love it so much. That's the only, uh, there's no other explanation other than I just love it so much, no matter what the outcome is. Sure. Sure. It went well, I feel like. Oh, dude, I think it went yeah. great. Yeah, there's a ton of, ton of mosquitoes. I was in a fire. Yes. I was in a fire. Only got burned once, so that's cool. Licked, dude, my, yeah. licked my hand once. Um, I was like, <laughs> uh, dude, I saw that. I have footage of that. Oh, do you? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, in your podcast or in your Patreon uh, episode, everyone go subscribe to Brian's Patreon. Oh, I know he boy. won't tell you to subscribe to it, no, but I will. I will. It's no. really good. There's Stop lots it. of great content on there. Stop it. Um, I'm subscribed. It's only like, I don't know how much I pay, but like I pay a couple bucks. It's like a cup of coffee every month. It's great content. <laughs> Hours of content for a cup of coffee. You should go and subscribe right now. That's true. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, those you are go, facts, go, but also you, stop it. <laughs> you, you go, you go, subscribe if you want. I guess. Yeah, it's, or not. it's not a big deal. It's yeah, cool. you don't yeah. have to if you don't. Yeah. Want to. If you like um, <laughs> go subscribe for sure. Um, so, um, that's right. Oh, I was listening your to your Patreon. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was listening to your Patreon episode, <laughs> no. and um, you yeah. said you were 
people are asking you like, what is the, someone asked you, what is the craziest thing that happened on set or something? Yeah. And you said blisters and tethered. And I was like, I am responsible for all the traumatic incidents that yeah. happen to Brian when he's on set. I'm ha- totally happy with that. <laughs> also, I haven't been around a ton of like crazy things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, sitting, I'm not exaggerating when I say in a fire. Like, yep. <laughs> you're like, we need to, we need to move the rock a little closer, a little closer. I was like, all right, I can sit into it and I can perform as best I can, yeah. but I can't be here for a long period of time because it burned. <laughs> yeah, if, if the scene was different subject matter, I would have taken a lot better care of you. But (laughs) since the scene, that's the thing is like, dude, I'll do anything for a movie. But the thing is, and I'll make you do anything for a movie. (laughs) It's really the the right way to say that. Um, But, you know, I was like, I don't think that this character potentially being in pain, not only emotionally, but also physically could add an extra layer to it. So oh. I'm going to make sure Brian doesn't get hurt, but a I little pain, I a didn't little... even think of that. Yeah, Look at so. you using me for my own means. Well, I'm not going <laughs> to tell you that on set. <laughs> but also what's interesting is I had Carly off, off screen. Yeah. And I told her, um, I told her, all right, Carly, you're going to have the, the um, eye line is the horse. Yep. And I just want, you know, for when Brian's looking, I want him to have something to look at. And I, I don't want him to know this, but I want you to react as if you were sort of a friend of this character or, or um, an acquaintance. Oh. And, I, and, and nothing crazy, but just subtle facial expressions I want you to do. Um, and she's like, okay, I got this. Like, she was really excited. Yeah. Um, and I knew she could do it. She's a great actress. I knew she would be great. Absolutely. At it. And then after the shoot, she was like, yeah, I don't think Brian even saw me <laughs> because of the smoke. It, so I yeah. had her there the whole time, like <laughs> acting, <laughs> reacting to what you were saying, and you didn't see any of it. None of it. And that whole time I was like, oh, this is totally working. Like this, like him seeing Carly's reactions, that's totally working. It's totally making it better. That's and, so like, funny. In reality, you never saw any of it. It's so nope. funny. No, nope. That's interesting that it, it, it seemed to be better. I thought it did. I mean, it was probably huh. just me being like, oh, yeah, I, I came up with something smart. It actually worked. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know? Instead but of reality, me fooling you. Yeah. Like, that exactly. looks really good. It's got to be because of Carly. Yeah. <laughs> and then when we got done, she was like crying. And I was like, yes. Yeah. Was, like, that's I, why, though. She, I told her, I was like, I want you to like act as if so you're funny. his friend. And that's probably part of it, you know? Yeah. She was yes ending really well. She was in it. I dug it. I dug it. So that was we did. Fun, though. It was. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see how it goes. And, uh, you know, that'll be pretty neat. So you did blisters, but your next thing, your next thing that you were doing. Mm. So I'm going to release this when it's up. Okay. Okay. So it is currently live technically. Yeah. You're making another movie. I am but making another movie. Speaking of making another movie and bringing it back to your point of making another movie for this generation, mm. what are you doing right now? So, um, Gosh, Brian, you've had to hear this pitch like four different times. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so um, to give context, I'm, I'm, I'm working on this movie called Burger Bait. Um, and Brian has not only heard the pitch multiple times and to multiple people, but he's also read the script. There's very few people who have read the script, know the whole distribution deal, know everything about it. Yeah. Um, so Brian has sort of been an integral part, intra- oh, integral no. part. If you in can't pronounce this, it, then I wasn't. <laughs> in this project. Integral? Um, in, is that how you say it? integral? Integral. Integral? Inter- integral. He was an integral, integral part <laughs> in this project being made. Um, and, giving me, and giving me a lot of feedback, especially on the script and things like that. Um, and talking me off the ledge when I got a little bit too crazy. I feel like that's where I was integral. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting is like, okay, maybe we should just ex- talk about the movie um, <laughs> before we start talking about it as if people know what it is. Oh, yeah. Good point. Um, You're making okay, a so, Okay. Here we go. Practice your pitch, Chris. This Dude, is going to go out to this? at least three people. Uh, all three, <laughs> I love all three of you, each and every one of you. Yeah. I, have, I would love to know what you think about this idea. It's a great um, idea. So it's this movie called Burger Bait. Burger it Bait. It is. Drink, drink. It is a movie. It is about this guy, mm-hmm. this kid. He's like, you know, 20-something-year-old kid. 
uh, and he's working the night shift at Burger Bait. He's working the drive through and he begins to live stream himself on this platform called Weaver, W-E-E-V-R dot live. You could actually go there now if you wanted to. Eh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, <laughs> so he's, he's, he's live streaming himself on this platform called Weaver. And the idea behind Weaver of whoever created it is that you can only stream yourself one time. Yep. After you stream yourself, it, you can no longer do it ever again. There's no influencers on the site. There's no following people. There's nothing. There's none of that. It's just real people using their one chance, their one live stream to do something that they think is unique to their lives, something worth showing the people, right? The people yep. of Weaver. So he begins to live stream himself. He's live streaming himself while he's working the drive through at Burger Bait, which says a lot about our character, I think. Um, I'm just like, <laughs> this is, this is like the, one of the most interesting parts of his life, really, let alone his week. Yep. Um, he begins to live stream himself. And you know, meanwhile, he's dealing with his, his, his manager who cares way more about uh, the food that the crappy food that they serve more than his employees. And, um, you know, there's a girl there that he likes that he really probably should not like, um, but he sort of pursues her anyways. Um, so, you know, he's also dealing with crazy customers and their insane requests. Um, he's in the deep South. So there's some interesting characters that come through the drive through. Yeah. Um, but there's this other character in the movie throughout the script uh, called the chat. And the chat is basically, you know, if you know anything about live streaming, it's just the live viewers who are watching the stream and chatting, uh, which scrolls down the side of the screen. Yep. Um, and as his viewers ramp up and he gains popularity through this live stream, it begins to get a little bit dangerous. Um, you know, when you have strangers who are sort of trying to figure out your location and trying to figure out where you are and where you work and who your family is. And when they begin to gather this information, they can use it against you for their own entertainment as they watch you live. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is that Travis doesn't want to turn off the live stream. Um, you know, you might think an easy solution to this problem would just be to turn off the live stream. But a big part of his personality, and honestly, I think a big part of my personality is that I don't think I'd turn the live stream off. I think yeah. that if I had hundreds or thousands or maybe even tens of thousands of people watching me live, I would sacrifice my minimum wage job to use this moment in some way. Sure. Um, and I think there's a lot of people like that. Uh, and I think there's, there's probably even more people who think that that's completely insane, but I want to sort of explore <laughs> that idea. Why is that? Why would I leave it running when I could lose my job because of it? Yeah. Um, so that's a story element of it. And I think that the story works on its own uh, because if it doesn't, the rest of this is just a gimmick. So <laughs> the rest of it, which is how the movie is distributed. Yeah. I want to release this movie completely for free. Um, which is apparently a very difficult thing to do in, in these times. Um, <laughs> you don't say. But I've always wanted to release my movies for free. Okay. I think that those are just the, I don't know. I, I think our, I keep you know, talking about our generation. I'm sure it's annoying, but I think our generation sort of looks at movies in that way of like, I want to watch a movie for free. I'll watch it on Netflix because I pay like seven bucks a month or whatever it is, or I just have my parents thing and sure. I just watch movies for free and that's, and I like it. And it's, movies are so accessible now that it's like, you're going to make me pay for a movie. Like I'll just right. go watch one of the hundreds of movies on Netflix or hundreds of movies on Amazon prime. Um, so and I actually think that that's okay. I don't, I don't necessarily look at that as a bad thing. Like I said, like whatever's happening in the gen, in our generation, I think that it's totally fine and I want to move with it. Um, so I want to, I've always wanted to release my movies for free. And I think that I figured out a way to do it and this is how I do it. So the movie needs to look exactly like a live stream. There needs to be chat scrolling down the side. If you're not listening to this podcast now and have never heard of Burger Bay, I want you to be able to stumble across this quote unquote movie, this live stream that looks like it was recorded a couple of days ago and just watch it completely for free, not knowing that it's a movie. Yep. Um, so it looks 100% like a live stream in every way. And I, when I release it, I want to drop a link on Reddit and 
the link is going to say something like burger bait employee dies on live stream, you know, not safe for work. And then in parentheses, like skip to 90 minutes to see death. Right. Um, and when people click, uh, click on that link, it's going to take them over to Weaver where they can watch uh, that live stream and probably lots of other live streams that have been recorded. Sure. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, <laughs> Who knows? So they click it and it just begins to play. Um, so the only way to fund a movie that, that, uh, that is going to be released completely for free, um, I, I sort of landed on the idea of doing a Kickstarter. Um, and I've never been really that excited about Kickstarter for multiple reasons that I won't get into, but um, <laughs> I think that this one is different. I think that this one offers something never been offered before, something never been done before. So I want to treat my Kickstarter backers as if they were producers and investors in my film, as if I would treat anyone else, um, any other producer that I bring on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the Kickstarter tiers will be you get to, you get the script. I'm going to send you the script before we even start shooting. You can send me notes on it, character ideas, dialogue ideas. You can send me whatever you think about the script. And I've now brought you into the collaborative process of making this movie because you now have input in the final product. Um, I don't think very many Kickstarter films have ever released their script before even shooting. Um, right, right but I'm okay with that. I'm going to show you everything. Very risky, Chris uh, Foster. Yep. I'm going <laughs> to show doing you it. everything. I'm going to show you every, because I think the biggest reason people don't want to do it is because, oh, I don't want to spoil the movie. Right. But the way I look at it as your producers and investors in this movie, like you're in on this movie with me. You sure. have to keep the ending a secret. Just like I have to keep the ending a secret. You're in this with me. We're all in this together. Right. Um, you're not and, spoiling it for an audience. A producer exactly. isn't spoiled because they're helping make it. Exactly. So Interesting. they have been brought onto the team um, and know everything about, you know, the entire script. They know, they know everything that happens. Um, and I think that doing that will also make a better movie if I can take the, the best notes that come out of that. Right. Um, so the second part of it is that for the $25 tier, I'm going to have someone on set live streaming the entire process of making this movie. We're going to shoot for 10 nights, you know, six to nine hours a night, probably. And you're going to get to see every single thing that happens, every take, every mess up, every actor you get to, and not only that, but you get to interact with them live. You get to, you know, chat in the, in the, in the live stream. You get to say what you think. Like it's, it's a completely collaborative and, um, and live interactive experience behind of seeing the behind the scenes of how a movie gets made. Sure. And it's like um, the most behind the scenes thing ever. It's past. It's yeah, a it's, live behind the scenes. It's a beyond behind the scenes documentary or series or videos or anything like that. I've done a documentary movie, you know, yeah. like of, of behind the scenes, like it's beyond all of that. It's, yeah. you get to see every single thing. And what makes it so great is that if, this movie fails, you'll get to see, you'll get to see it live. You know, you'll get to <laughs> see everything that happens. You'll get to see what went wrong. You'll, you know, you can't come out of this experience not having learned something about making a movie. Sure. Um, so beyond that, I'm going to live stream myself the entire duration of this campaign. So from September 1st, which is when the campaign launches, from yep. September 30th, I'm going to live stream myself from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. EST every single day for 30 days straight to the point where Ooh. you can just be on Kickstarter. You can be like, oh, I have a question about the, the sticker reward. Like you're gonna send me stickers, I have a question about that. Let me click this button and you'll see my face unfortunately live <laughs> and you'll be able to ask me about the stickers about whatever you want you can give me your ideas you can tell me the idea sucks you can tell me the kickstarter is terrible you can tell me it's amazing whatever you want to talk to me about i'm going to be available for 360 hours in september for the duration of the campaign i'm making myself go. completely available to you to my backers to my producers honestly most producers don't even get treated this well I know. Um, <laughs> so i'm trying to bring you into this process as much as i can i want to put you on set next to me virtually um so that is the main idea it's very meta it's a movie for the internet kids it's it's a uh, it's 
very um, meta in the fact that I'm live streaming myself, make a movie about a guy live streaming himself. Yeah. And I also sort of look at it as a social experiment of like, no one's ever done this before. What happens when you bring in a group of people to watch you try and make a movie from beginning to end who are going to be interacting with you the entire time? How does that affect the end product? How does that affect my mental health throughout the making of this thing? Sure. Um, so it's a lot of things. It's an experience, a social experiment, an art piece, a movie, a behind the scenes documentary. Uh, it's a lot of different things, but it's a, it's a pretty crazy project, I think. I'd say so. I'd say so. I think it's really cool. I think, I mean, I told you this after I read it the first time. I was like, I think it's a great idea. I think you touch on a lot of things. It's very uh, important. I think it shows a side of the internet that most people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. I think it's a genius idea. I, I'm really excited to see it because like, I know what happens, but also it's, it's so interesting. A thing that I love about you is like, you really believe in the heart of collaboration so much so that you'll open yourself up during the process of it. You're like, listen, if you help me make my movie, I'll show you what you're helping make. To the, like, curtain is b pulled back all the way. So much so that we'll live stream the making of it. You know, you're not talking about doing a vlog after every day of shooting of here's what we did. You're like, oh, no, we're going to, all of it, all mm -hmm. of it. Like, we're going to show you how to make a movie. Either a good movie or a bad movie, we'll find out. You exactly. Know? And what's great is that, you know, if I was just editing this together, I would you know, subconsciously at the very least show you the best parts of it. Oh, I would sure. show you the great parts, the funny parts, the, the happy parts. Yeah. Uh, in this case, you're going to see everything. You're going to see, you know, really tough times on set. You're going to see failures on set. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm being as vulnerable as I possibly can in showing you every single thing that happens. Yep. And it's going to be a learning experience for the both of us. For sure. For sure. But also like, you know, you've said, you've told me before that like, this is a different type of film school, mm. you know, where like, you're going to see stuff that like, oh, I didn't realize that's how they did that. Oh, I didn't realize how they did that. But as we're talking about it right now, I just realized <laughs> you're poor actors. If they do bad takes or they do bad work, it's like, just understand that there's a chance that your mistakes and not good things are going to be, <laughs> are going to be seen. <laughs> Yep. So that's a part of it too, right? Is everyone signing on to this project has to know exactly what they're getting themselves into. Right. And I think that a good example of that will be in September when I'm live streaming myself for 12 hours a day, like sure. no one's going to have a better understanding of what these actors are going to be going through better than me at right. that point. Um, so I'm completely subjecting myself to it. I'm not asking anyone to do anything that I'm not doing myself. You, um, uh, you know, this is, that's the thing though, is like, I was talking to my, my executive producer and he was like, an actor's actor, you know, would love something like this. He was like, dude, we can get, you know, for sure. We can get like uh, represented actors on this thing. Like someone who is just so interested in the specific craft of acting for sure. they get i mean i'm giving them so much they have improv they have they'll oh, be yeah. able to control the camera at some points they have so much power in this film which is another reason why i believe so much in collaboration is i have to pick the perfect people for this movie yep. and that's part of it right they know what they're getting signed up for um and yeah. I think it'll be a weird experience for everyone <laughs> involved um but i also look at it in a in a much more um you know, macro level of like, like, dude, this is a crazy thing. I'm going to be spending, uh, you know, 50% of my entire life in September working on this, you know, being live, like, like yeah. showing them my life thing, you know, my therapy sessions, like you're going to see everything. Sure. So, but I look at it as like in 10 years, I can look back and be like, remember that crazy movie that I right. made burger bait. <laughs> remember when I was live streaming myself or, you know, 12 sure. hours a day in September. So I'll come out of it. Um, I hopefully better. Um, and with a better understanding of the internet of what I'm making the movie about. Sure. Um, but I, I've said this before, like I think in, in 10 years, people are going to be live streaming themselves 24 seven. I think that they're going to be, they're going to have a camera it. on them 24 seven and live streaming and talking to people. Um, so I, I think I'm just early on in that idea. I think it's going to happen no matter what. Interesting. It's like a knowing Truman show. 
It's like, yeah, you know, it's, happening. it's, it's an interesting, it's such an interesting idea. And it, it, I, I love the idea that you have this thing for the times. It's going to be very relatable to anyone who knows anything about streaming culture and stuff like that. But also like, I, it's so crazy. It's just a crazy idea. But also you're like, you're showing how invested you are in the idea. Mm-hmm. And then the fact that you're like, hey, listen, anyone who wants to come along, let's do this together. You know, and it's, uh, I think it's pretty cool. I'm really excited. I, I think the script is amazing. I'm really excited to see what you do with it. And the fact that you're putting yourself on the line and showing people exactly what they're getting when supporting the project. Um, so on that, the Kickstarter works in tiers, if I remember correctly. What are the different reward things that you are offering? So the two main ones I think are being able to collaborate on the script and then the live streams. Those are sort of the main two um, that I'm really, uh, I think will probably be the most popular. Sure. Outside of that, um, there's a tier where you can pick a custom username, which will show yeah. up on screen at some point. You get the um, person in the chat. Yep. Yeah. There's a, yeah, exactly. There's another one where you can pick a comment um, and I can even Ooh. show you the scene that your comment will go over so you can react to it or you can just say something horrible and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want. Um, right. right. As most chats do. Exactly. Um, yeah. uh, another one is a, a burger bait hat, an employee hat, which I actually think is really cool. I'm really excited about it. There you go. Um, our, love merch. Yes, our incredible art director uh, Julia made our uh, logo, and she just killed it's it. It's really cool. I love our logo so much. It's be- like I had an idea of what I wanted it to be, and I mocked it up. And I actually had two other designers send me versions of the logo, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Yeah, this is fine." And then I didn't. Uh, maybe I did. I I wanted something else, so I I was suggested her by someone else, and. I told her like all of the ridiculous things that I think about the restaurant Burger Bait, which is a real <laughs> place, by the way. Burger Bait is real. That's um, insane. <laughs> and she just came up with this logo and I was like, I didn't even have changes for her. I was like, just give me more of this. Whatever yeah. you're doing, give me more <laughs> of it. And I will, I, I love it. There you um, go. So, so I got the, the logo. So, you know, we'll have hats, um, very limited edition hats. Mm -hmm. Um, another tier is that I want, I'm going to have, uh, like a pile of disposable cameras on set and we're just going to fill the cameras with photos and there's going to be very limited amount of them. So if you back that specific tier, you're going to get all the photos on one of the cameras. So like Interesting. One of one, like no one else has these, only you. Wow. Um, that one's going to be really fun too. So I'm just going to have That's people cool take idea. Yeah. It could be not safe for work. We don't know. Uh, but <laughs> it'll be very, it'll be very fun. I think that aspect. I'm really excited about that one. It's one of my favorites too. It's a good idea. Yeah. And there's some, some other limited edition stuff uh, that I think people will like, but uh, yeah, those are those are kind of my favorites. My I favorite like ones. it. I like it a lot. It's it's so cool. So you know, anyone that's listening that wants to be a part of making a movie, you're giving them that opportunity. Pretty cool, dude. I've said this before. It's like when I was coming up making short films. Like, and I mean, I'm still coming up, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I would have killed for for something like this, especially during a pandemic when I have the time to be able to sit down and watch how a movie gets made from beginning to end. Sure. Like, Dude, like just imagine like being able to watch, this isn't a great comparison, but just like imagine <laughs> being able to watch like Jurassic Park get made, but it's live streamed. Like sure. being able to see everything that happens on set, being able to see how Spielberg works, how the dinosaurs work, like how, how all the different actors, like that's such an interesting idea for me. So I've taken what I can do, which is not Jurassic Park, which is not Spielberg and sort yeah. of <laughs> minimized it. And like, I think I could do it in this way. And only I can do it this way. Sure. Um, so that's that's kind of what I'm hoping for the experience to sort of be like is like people who find this movie on Reddit will just watch it, but there will be a whole group of people who watch the entire thing get made. No one else knows that it's like a real movie except sure. for this group of people, you know, you and me. I think that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're not going to have like a landing page, like a website promoting it or nothing like that. It's like a specific link on a random page on Reddit. If you know, you know kind of yeah thing. yeah so um well it'll link over to weaver which is okay. the live streaming platform that he's live streaming on in the movie got it um so it'll be yeah just like a random link 
from a specific Reddit username, which I already have. Um, okay. It's in the script. Um, uh, yes. I think I might so, know. yes. So it'll, <laughs> it'll drop. Um, yeah. We're just that title. It'll take you over to Weaver and people will be able to watch it from there completely for free. Interesting. You know? This is just, a, it's such a crazy, like unconventional idea. Yeah. Like, because you're not going to have like ads running throughout different websites and promoting it all the time. Like essentially this is going to be your promotion for it. But other than that, it's like, find the link, you know, it's, Dude. it's such a secret club that you're building, which I think is, I think that's the allure of it as well. Mm. Is like, if you know, you know, and that's it, mm -hmm. you know, there's not going to be a crazy thing. It's like, Hey, you pass the link around, like check out this thing. It's pretty crazy. Dude, I'm strong. So I'm going to do marketing to market the Kickstarter page. But right. If the Kickstarter page is successful, I'm strongly considering erasing everything on the day that the Kickstarter ends of releasing all marketing, all traces of burger bait, and then just dropping burger bait when it's time so that there's very, you know, there'll be this podcast, there'll be, you know, a couple other things that you can kind of find, but sure. like, I want to make it so that it's harder to find than, than, uh, than having stuff plaster all over social media. You know what I mean? You're crazy. <laughs> dude they are, I, I have it, to be crazy for this idea someone crazy as me yeah. is the only person who could who could pull absolutely who could do something like this you know absolutely i totally agree and i mean that in the best sense of the word just like yes. you it's like here are how things are done you're like how about no and you're like what what your brain is just short-circuiting over it mm -hmm. but it's and you're offering to take people along with you i think it's pretty badass dude i'm i'm giving them a free movie and I'm, try I'm trying to give them as much as I possibly can for as little money as I can possibly take. That's what I'm right. trying to do. I like it. I like it a lot. And so where can people find the Kickstarter then? Um, so if you go to burgerbait.com, if you're listening to this before September 1st, um, you can go to- not, because yes. it won't be out then. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you watch, if you listen to this, then um, you can go to burgerbait.com and you just throw your email into that and you can see the campaign trailer. Um, the trailer is, is out there somewhere right now. I love it. Thank I you. I may have seen it a few times. <laughs> I love it. Oh, so that's where all those views came from. It's from you. Okay. Right here. Yep. Right, right. <laughs> um, okay. Got it. Um, so yeah, burgerbait.com is a good way. You could go to weaver.live. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the Kickstarter will launch on, uh, September 1st. If you do put your email into burgerbait.com, you will get an email that says, Hey, the Kickstarter launched and you can see it from there. Sweet. Um, but yeah. I'm excited, dude. I'm really excited about this. I'm excited that I'm getting back into actually making stuff and I yeah. don't have to listen to what anyone says. I don't have, <laughs> you know, like, Hey guys, sure. everyone who's back in this Kickstarter, like you and me, we're the only ones doing this thing. Like we don't have to deal with high level producers who like are telling us what to do. We don't have to listen to investors who need their money back on the end. Like we can make this as weird and as cool and as fun <laughs> as we, as we want. We don't have to listen to anyone. And I think that's what I'm so excited about is like, this is going to come out exactly how we want, you know? I love it. I love, I love the we as well. And at the time that you're listening to this, people, you can go to the Kickstarter. You go to burgerbait.com, reach the Kickstarter, and also you'll be live streaming if you hit it at the right time. Yeah, so September 1st to September 30th, I'm going to be live streaming uh, myself for way too long. And yep. it could completely, <laughs> you know, I was originally going to do 24-7, yeah. Ryan was one of the people who kind of talked me off that ledge as well as my therapist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they, 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 they seem to have my mental health in, you know, at the top of their priority when it comes to my artistic endeavors. But yeah. Um, yeah, dude, my, my therapist was like, you're going to do what? 20, 24 hours? Uh, no. Pretty much definitely. what I said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I was like, mm, I feel like that's not going to be good. <laughs> I still like, there's nope. a small part of me still nope. that is like, I could like, nope. I didn't say you couldn't. I yeah. No, you shouldn't. No. I know you're right. right. You could but, drink rat poison. I don't think you should though. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, but yeah, 12, I mean, 12 hours a day is still crazy. So, um, yeah. yeah, I don't think anyone's done that before. Maybe they have, but they haven't done um, it producing a movie. I'll tell you. That's for sure. Yeah. That's going to be a thing too, is like juggling, yeah. not only entertaining the live stream to a certain extent, but also trying to get this thing made. Yeah. Um, I'll have to make sure when I call you that I behave. <laughs> yeah, dude. Don't say any of that crazy stuff you usually say, bro. You got to keep, got to turn it down. PG. That's right. I'll start everything. Like, you know, people are like, am I on speaker? 
I'm just going to be like, am I on stream? You will be for sure. You will be on speaker. I'm going to answer all my calls on speaker. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but it's happening. At the time you're listening to this, it is happening right now. Maybe not exactly right now, depending on the time of day, but you're streaming yourself for 12 hours a day. Your Kickstarter is live. You want to make a movie with some people and bring them along for the ride. Dude, will you come on the live stream one day and come hang out? Sure. Yes. Dude. Well, all right. it depends on what time. I might be working. No, I mean, dude, 12 hours a day for 30 days. Can you give me one hour in those? Oh, for sure. I just mean if it's like, you know, I sleep from like the mornings. Oh, you do and sleep then I work at times. night. So it all depends. Anytime also, between 12 p.m. and 12 a.m. Oh, oh, I thought you flipped it. I thought it was 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. I was like, when no, are you no, going to no, sleep? No, 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 no. Yeah, I was like, why would you pick those times? Wait, I did I say, say 12 a.m.? You might have. Okay. <laughs> If I said 12 a.m. I think you did. And I was like, whoa. But then I was like, I've already talked to you back for 24 hours. So, okay. Okay. Noon for clarification, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. EST every day for 30 oh, days. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't going to call you out on that. I was going to wait until we got done, but now we're doing it on the air. But okay. Yes. I'm so okay. glad that you said that. If I did say 12 a.m., I, I think you did. Okay. You're probably like, right. Why? Why would you do yeah. that to your sleep schedule? Yeah, Don't that be would like be me. terrible. <laughs> yeah. That would be okay. worse than 24-7. So you're saying from noon to midnight, all of September, yes. you're live streaming. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll pop up on one. Why not? Sweet, pop up dude. on a few. We'll see what I'd love that. It happens. That'd Just be great. Shenanigans. It'll be me, you, and no one else. <laughs> yeah, totally. Or maybe, I mean, yeah, dude, let's do it. We can, we'll, we'll figure out some, some entertaining to do maybe. Done. I love it. I love it. I think it's a perfect, uh, perfect landing for this episode. There's no time code on how long this is, so I have no idea. But can you believe we've been talking for this long, however long it is? Dude, it's been <laughs> that long. That's so oh, crazy. man. Such a, a large amount of time. Yeah, and it feels like <laughs> such a short amount of time yeah. in comparison. Cool, boy. Yeah. We just got started. <laughs> <laughs> but before I let you go, where can people find you online? Where can they find your movies? We know where they can find Burger Bait. Yeah, just burgerbait.com. Don't go anywhere yeah. else. Just go burgerbait.com. <laughs> also, subscribe to Brian's Patreon. Stop it. Um, he has an excellent Patreon. No, it's one it. of the greatest Patreons in existence. No, he's go lying. and uh, subscribe <laughs> to that. Even if it's just for a dollar, it goes a long way to, to, to support uh, Brian's artistic Stop it. Endeavors. What are you so, doing? I'm going to so cut please. this out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, go subscribe and that's it. Burgerbait and Brian's Patreon. That's it. Burgerbait and Foster Kid Films, I think, on Instagram. <laughs> is it on I'm gonna, Twitter? I'm going to I'm just gonna, gonna forward the URL <laughs> to bossygoodfilms.com to your Patreon. We're just, gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna blast each other up. Yeah. I think it's Foster Kid Films on Instagram. Do you have Twitter? Is it Linchpin? Yeah, it's the same what? on it. Foster Kid on the same, same thing on it. Foster Kid Films on Twitter and Instagram, burgerbait.com, Kickstarter Burgerbait. Chris Foster, I love you, buddy. I love you too, Brian. Thanks for let's, coming back on let's for the first thing. time. For the first time, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, my God. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.